Namaste, Jai Kali, Jai Mahadev, Jai Bharat. I hope everyone is doing good and taking good care of themselves. Remember, if you are fit and fine, you can take better care of your loved ones. So today I'm going to talk about six types of basic emotions and their effect on human behavior. Yes, we all know that we all have emotional side and sometimes it gets triggered or we become over emotional or we become extremely sensitive and uh, that in a way affects and influences how we behave and act yeah we can't deny the fact that emotion also influences you know our uh, choices our action our behavior it, it does influence to an extent so as we know there are um, a lot of different kinds of emotions and uh, how it influences us, I mean, from the way how we interact with others to the way how we behave and how we react to things. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, if you see with time, psychologists have, uh, you know, uh, tried to identify the, uh, you know, different uh, types of emotion that people experience. I mean, like broadly, uh, what we are going to talk about is how broadly uh, it is classified into six, you know, types and how it affects and influences us. Yeah. So if you see uh, the, I mean, like uh, coming back to the basic emotion. So during 1970s, you know, psychologist Paul, you know, Ekman uh, identified six basic emotions and he suggested that these were universally experienced in all human cultures. So now, of course, uh, the field of psychology has evolved a lot. But uh, earlier, I mean, like, just imagine how things would be in 1950s, 60s and 70s. Yeah. So the basic emotions that he identified, I'm, I'm talking about the psychologist Paul Ekman, uh, what he identified the six basic ones was, you know, happiness, sadness, disgust, fear, surprise and anger. So these were the six ones and of course later on you know with his more research and study he further you know uh, expanded his list of uh, emotions and he included even pride, shame and uh, embarrassment and excitement as well. So I mean as how time changed uh, I mean with his research and with his experience he did add on more things to it yeah so today we are going to mostly talk about happiness sadness fear disgust anger and surprise the six basic emotions yeah so now let us start off with happiness of all the different types of emotions happiness tends to be the one that people strive you know uh, for the most Happiness is often defined as a pleasant uh, emotional state that is characterized, you know, by feeling of contentment, joy, gratification, satisfaction to an extent and well-being. Yeah. So the most popular of the emotions that most people look forward to is happiness. Yeah. And also research, you know, on happiness has increased significantly since, uh, you know, 1960s. And uh, within a number of disciplines, including the branch of psychology, which is also known as positive psychology. So this type of emotion is sometimes expressed through, you know, facial expression, yeah, uh, body language and also tone of voice. So uh, when it comes to positive psychology, there are three aspects that one can uh, see through, you know, with the help of these three aspects. One is the facial expression. Or rather, let me simplify it. An emotion can be uh, seen in three ways. One on the basis of, uh, you know, uh, facial expression. The second is body language and the third is tone of uh, voice how one talks and how one uh, you know behaves and reacts yeah so while happiness is considered one of the basic human emotions the things we think will create happiness uh, 
tend to be heavily influenced by culture. Yes, culture has a role to play and culture influences uh, mostly on how we feel happy. I mean, like in general, if you see, uh, culture has a lot of influence uh, and of course society as well. So uh, yes, so that influence is there. So for example, if you see, you know, the pop culture influence, you know, uh, tends to emphasize that uh, Attaining certain things such as buying home or having a high paying job will result in happiness. So, you know, all, all these cultures and subcultures, uh, you know, they, they project a specific idea uh, that if you resonate with is going to get you happiness. Yeah. And uh, if you see the realities, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, if you uh, see closely, the realities of what actually contributes to, uh, you know, happiness are often much more complex and much more highly individualized. It's, it's not always cultural or, you know, social. It's much more than that. So um, we, we just can't expect that uh, uh, just to culture and its norm and ethics can make us happy there are much more things uh, individually i mean on the basis of individual individuality uh, that uh, you know determines whether uh, you are able to experience happiness or not yeah so happiness is not that easy yeah and also if you see people have long you know believed that happiness and health were connected yeah, that notion also comes that uh, if you are happy, you are healthy. If you are unhappy, you are unhealthy. Yeah, but research has supported the idea that happiness can, you know, play uh, a role in both physical and mental health. Yeah, but uh, happiness and uh, health cannot be absolutely uh, connected with each other it, it can be different some might be unwell but might be very happy yeah and uh, some might be um, absolutely fit but they might be unhappy so it's vice versa but yes uh, to an extent of course a happy mind uh, leads to a happy life and I mean in general terms if you see that uh, if you are happy you tend to function well and you tend to be healthier but uh, as far as the research and other things are concerned these things are not uh, so much correlated yeah so this is the point that i wanted to clear uh, it's it's not uh, absolutely correlated that uh, you know happiness affects health and health affects happiness uh, it does to an extent but uh, it can function uh, separately also in cases yeah and also if you see happiness has been linked to a variety of you know uh, outcomes in uh, including increased longevity increased uh, marital satisfaction uh, and also conversely unhappiness has been linked to a variety of poor health uh, you know uh, outcomes and uh, poor health uh, conditions so uh, definitely being happy affects but happiness cannot be one of the important factors of being happy or sick. And I'm sure you all must have seen uh, various cases where the person is fit but they are unhappy. And some of the people who are unhappy but they are, I mean, who are unhealthy but they are quite happy in their life and they are enjoying it. So it affects to an extent but it is not absolutely connected and it doesn't go hand in hand everywhere yeah but of course uh, since time immemorial people had been saying that if you are happy you are healthy and vice versa kind of a thing and if you are healthy you will automatically feel happy so this 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 shouldn't be a very rigid idea in today's time things are different that's what i wanted to clear yeah so now uh, moving on to the next emotion that is sadness. Yes, a lot of us, you know, uh, go through this uh, emotion called sadness. 
and uh, if you see sadness is another type of uh, emotion you know uh, often defined as a transient emotional state characterized by feelings of disappointment grief uh, hopelessness disinterest and uh, dampened mood yeah so uh, i mean like sadness uh, includes a lot of different feelings sadness is not just no sadness includes a lot of different uh, feelings uh, you know feelings like disappointment grief hopelessness uh, and uh, disinterest and dampened mood yeah and uh, also if you see like other emotions uh, sadness is something that all people experience from time to time it's not that people are untouched and people have never experienced sadness everyone experiences uh, most of the emotions in their life it's not that someone is untouched and someone has never been sad yeah so we cannot uh, have uh, that approach you know towards looking at things and understanding things so yes everyone uh, experiences sadness and like other emotions sadness is something that all people experience from time to time and in some cases people can experience prolonged and severe period of sadness and that is uh, that prolonged period ideally it is said like two weeks of prolonged sadness and you know uh, uh, i mean i mean that prolonged state of sadness if it uh, stays for more than two weeks uh, it's a sign of depression and uh, of course uh, now if we see sadness can be you know expressed in a number of ways uh, including crying dampened mood lethargy quietness withdrawal from others like disinterested not willing to talk or not feel like communicating or interacting so uh, there are a, a number of ways that uh, sadness is expressed pressed by us yeah and also if you see the uh, type and severity of sadness uh, can vary you know depending uh, upon the root cause and how people cope with such feelings can also differ so uh, you know the type and the severity of sadness is not the same throughout in every human being it, it's different from people to people so uh, it, it depends on the root cause it depends on the severity and how the person individually is coping up or managing it yeah handling it or experiencing it or uh, reacting to it so sadness is uh, sadness depends from people to people there is no general uh, rule that uh, sadness will be this way and uh, people will react this way it it varies it changes i mean as how the factors there are different factors responsible for it and of course uh, it it processes out in different ways in different people we all are different and we all are unique and we have our own you know way of expressing things yeah and also if you see sadness can uh, you know often lead people to engage in coping mechanisms you know such as avoiding other people you know going to seclusion people stop talking you know uh, to other people they 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 become a little anti social and they don't uh, socialize much and uh, they or some of the people also get into self medicating you know um, that's also absolutely a very bad and a dangerous idea and uh, one should avoid and always seek uh, help of a uh, a uh, healthcare professional uh, you know rather than uh, getting into self medicating and also if you see rumin ruminating over negative thoughts so see positive and negative things happen but uh, we can't keep on ruminating the past or we can't keep on ruminating what's happened in the past and uh, feel sad about it in present we don't have control over our past past is born it, it was it was a learning lesson we we just can't keep on you know churning it and spoil our present and spoil our future yeah and uh, also if you see uh, uh you know such behaviors can actually you know uh, uh you know 
heighten you know these these coping mechanisms like self medicating avoiding people ruminating these things can actually heighten or increase the level of sadness you know uh, these actually mess up the case more so one should start talking that's the reason in most of my videos i say start talking don't hesitate talk it out if you have something in your mind and heart just talk it out and also no point in ruminating over past and apart from that don't get into self medicating uh, habits just uh, look for a healthcare provider or a professional and they can help you out and doctors are there they can help you out but don't get into all these things it, it it's it's much better if you don't get into all these things yeah so this was uh, a little bit about sadness now moving on to fear yes fear is a powerful emotion that can also play an important role in uh, survival yes it does play an important role we can't deny that um see uh, when you face some sort of danger and experience fear you go through what is known as the fight or flight response isn't it i mean uh, that's that's a natural response of our body of our mind you know we just get into fight or flight response yeah so uh, i mean like uh, our, our our body is quite an intelligent machine yeah and also if you see uh, when you are you are experiencing fear you 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 i mean your muscles your muscles become tense your heart rate and respiration you know uh, increases and of course your mind becomes more alert you know priming your entire body to either run away from the danger or just fight and get over with it isn't it so fear does trigger a lot of things in us and uh, sometimes it's good i i think uh, it helps it helps to develop our skills uh, it helps us to uh, understand and develop more of uh, survival skills and uh, how to fight you know uh for our own rights and how to live with dignity so definitely fear does help in some ways but uh, not the artificially induced fear but yes uh, in certain situation and circumstances fear helps we can't deny that now uh, if you see this response helps uh, you know uh, ensure that you are prepared to effectively deal you know uh, the threats in your environment so this is a absolutely an automatic response from your body you know a uh, fight or flight response that we talked about and uh, this is basically that uh, i you are able to deal with the threat and you are able to survive in whatever environment you are in so um, and and again if you see uh, expressions of this type of emotion can be seen you know uh, if you if you talk about the uh, facial expression so uh, when you are afraid or when you have when you experiencing fear uh, uh, you you experience you know uh, as some of the people experience dilated pupils and uh, also you know uh, widening the eyes you know widening of the eyes and uh, you know pulling back the chin you know and, you know these are the normal responses i mean some of the facial expressions to look out for dilated pupil and uh, pull back chin and of course widen eyes when you when you are experiencing fear and um, of course if if we come to the body language thing uh, we notice that uh, there are attempts to hide or flee from the threat so when fear is there when you are experiencing fear you either want to deal with it get over with it or you just want to run away from the threat yeah so that is the body language aspect and if you see uh, the psychological reactions so the psychological reaction that happens uh, because of all the psychological reactions uh, what happens uh, what what is noticeable in the body is again rapid breathing and heartbeat you know uh, higher heartbeat and rapid breathing 
so these are uh, some of the things uh, that uh, we can uh, notice you know when we are experiencing fear yeah so of course not everyone experiences you know experiences fear in the same way uh, some people may be more sensitive to fear and certain situation or objects may be more likely to trigger this emotion so again fear is absolutely an individual uh, thing it, it depends from people to people i mean like uh, I might not be scared of something, you might be scared of something, yeah? Something might not trigger fear in me, but something might trigger fear in you, yeah? I mean, for example, if you see horror movies, I find it very funny. I'm not scared of horror movies, but horror movies does trigger fear in kids and some some people. We can't deny that. So that is one of the uh, simplest thing with which we can understand that uh, again it depends from people to people it's not the same for everyone yeah and also if you see fear is uh, you know the emotional response uh, to an immediate threat so if 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 we if we come across a threat so the immediate response is fear and that then you know fight or flight response gets triggered so the first you know thing that uh, um, begins is the um, fear and then that response kicks in fight or flight yeah so that is how our body uh, responds and uh, if you see, uh, uh, we can also, uh, you know, develop a similar reaction to, you know, anticipated uh, threats or even our thoughts about potential dangers. And uh, this is what we generally think of as anxiety, social anxiety, for example, involves an anticipated fear of social situations. Yeah. So uh, if you see, uh, just a thought about a potential danger, just a thought, it might not be danger in the first place, what we are thinking about, but just a thought about a potential danger can trigger these emotions inside of us and uh, we, we can start experiencing fear, yeah. And also uh, some people on the other hand actually seek out to, you know, fear provoking situations. Extreme sports and other thrills can be fear inducing. But some people seem to thrive and even enjoy such feelings. So as how I gave you an example of a horror movie, I mean like uh, I enjoy, I laugh at it, but uh, some people are very scared. And the same thing if you go into all these, you know, adventure sports and, uh, you know, all these thrilling extreme sports activities, some people are scared and uh, some people drive pleasure out of it. Some people are, you know, really scared of it. But uh, some people like inducing it and they, they, they feel good with it. Yeah. So again, it depends from people to people and their bandwidth and how they uh, manage and handle, you know, these emotions. Yeah. And also, if you see, you know, a repeated exposure to fear uh, object or situation can lead to familiarity and assimilation which can reduce feeling of fear and anxiety so if you see a uh, repeated exposure to fear object or situation can you know uh, lead to familiarity and assimilation so regular you know uh, for example i can't scare a kid on a regular basis once I scare, second time if I scare, third time the kid will get used to, or for instance, any person. If I'm if I'm trying to, you know, make them scared of something, once, twice, then they get used to. And after a point, uh, uh, you know, they have got very reduced emotion when it comes to fear. They are not scared of it. They're just used to, okay, it's a daily stuff. I have experienced this quite a lot. I'm not scared of it. Like, for example, some people are very scared of medicine, doctors, but I had fallen sick so many times that I'm not scared of medicine and I'm not scared of doctors. Some people are scared of surgeries. And uh, I mean, I had quite a lot of surgeries regarding my health. 
and uh, I, I don't have any uh, fear of surgery. Uh, it's just like treatment. I mean, one is orally and one is like surgically fixing and treating the problems. So again, it depends from people to people, but the regular exposure, you know, uh, to fear actually reduces it. So uh, even when, even with kids also, if you see too much of scary movies, they are saying after one point, they're like, we are not scared of it anymore. Yeah, so we all have seen that overexposure to any such thing, you know, reduces um, or rather you can say uh, reduces the entire, you know, uh, uh, that fear. The fear begins to reduce. And once the fear reduces, then it becomes non-existent and non-scary. Yeah. So that was about uh, fear. Now moving on to disgust. Yeah. So disgust is another of the original six basic emotions described by Ekman. And the disgust can be displayed in a number of ways, including first, let's see the body language aspect, you know, turning away from the object of disgust. So, you know, I mean, for example, this disgusts me, this crunchy. You know, I'm turning away. Yeah, the physical reactions such as vomiting and retching. Yeah, so these are the physical reactions. I mean, some people puke, some people feel nauseatic, and some people feel wretched. So that is again the physical reaction. Uh, the third is again the facial expression. If you observe, you know, there will be wrinkling the nose, curling the upper lip, something like that. You know, something like this. Yeah, so disgust, I'm disgusted. You know, these kind of expressions can be noticed. Yeah, so now if you see this sense of revulsion can originate from a number of things, including an unpleasant taste, sight, or smell. Yeah, researchers believe that this emotion evolved as a reaction to foods that might be harmful or fatal when people smell or taste food that have gone bad for example disgust is a typical reaction yeah i mean like uh, of course if something stale is there and it tastes different and it smells different of course we're like eh. you know it's, it's a common response yeah and also if you see poor hygiene infection blood rot and death can also trigger you know, a disgust response. I mean, in some people, I'm not generalizing it, but some people might feel disgusted with these things as well. And they're more, uh, you know, uh, they may be, you know, uh, or rather you can say this might be the uh, body's way of avoiding things that may carry transmissible diseases. So disgust, if you see, it's, it's to an extent a uh, natural response. Uh, which has evolved over a period of time and uh, I mean like it's absolutely uh, okay to be disgusted about something uh, I mean like or rather you can say disgust can also be you know categorized as uh, a kind of a defense mechanism in a way to protect yourself from something that your body or mind is identifying as disgust, yeah? And also if you see, people can also experience moral disgust, you know, when they observe others engaging in behaviors that they find distasteful, immoral and evil, yeah? So disgust is, uh, you can say, uh, your, your way, you can say your, your the way how your body you know uh, develops its own unique way to protect itself from the things that disgust you so disgust could be that kind of a response if i'm making sense yeah so it's it's a response of the body to the things that it is not used to or the to the things that it identifies as not normal okay and all right yeah so disgust is a product of that. Now, 
let's come to anger yeah anger can be particularly powerful emotion you know uh, characterized by the feeling of hostility agitation frustration and antagonism towards others like fear anger can play a part in your body's fight or flight response when a threat generates feeling of anger you may be inclined to fend off the danger and protect yourself anger is often displayed through facial expression let's see such as frowning or glaring like this the body language again if we see uh, such as taking a strong stance or just turning away now tone of voice such as speaking you know gruffly or yelling when one is angry these things are uh, these things you can notice uh, the tone of voice of course is gruffly or they are just yelling and psychological response if you see is uh, either they are sweating or turning red or they are experiencing you know a little heat in their ear you know some of the people experience either you know they turn red they perspire a lot they sweat a lot or they feel a hot kind of a sensation in and around the ear yeah so that is one of the psychological responses and uh, aggressive behaviors of course if you see when it comes to anger you know you can see things like hitting kicking throwing objects and all of these things so in short people become abusive also when they are angry not all but some do yeah and uh, while anger is often thought as a negative emotion it can you know sometimes be good thing it can be constructive in helping you know uh, clarify your needs in a relationship so i mean if you have to take a stand anger anger can be helpful sometimes and uh, anger of course is a negative emotion but uh, it helps sometimes you know in clarifying things it's fine and it can also motivate you to take action and find solutions to the things that are bothering you so in a way anger is helpful but constantly being angry and becoming abusive and toxic is something which is not good so anger has its own benefits but anger has its own drawbacks as well anger can become a problem however when it is excessive or expressed in a way that are unhealthy dangerous and harmful to the others yeah and also uh, uncontrolled anger can quickly turn into aggression abuse and violence in no time so mm, controlled managed anger it's fine but if it goes beyond then it becomes quite aggressive it becomes abusive and often it becomes uh, bad ugly and it, it becomes violent so that, that is the reason anger management is often suggested to such people who just cannot manage and understand and cope up with this emotion yeah and also if you see this kind of emotion can have both mental and uh, physical consequences yeah it does every emotion uh, has some mental and physical consequences and uh, if unchecked you know anger can make it difficult to make rational decisions and can even impact your physical health so moderation talking discussing group therapy i think all these is very essential when it comes to you know managing anger yeah and uh, the uh, last one that we are going to talk about is surprise yes surprise is another you know uh, one of the six basic types of human emotions originally described by ekman yeah surprise is usually quite brief and is characterized by a psychological startle response following something unexpected yeah oh, wow you know these kind of responses that we see i mean we have gone through all of that i mean i used to be surprised when i used to open my birthday gifts and if i used to get something which i was longing to have so yes i'm sure we all must have you know experienced this emotion 
and also uh, you know this type of emotion i mean uh, surprise uh, can be positive negative or neutral sometimes it can be positive negative or neutral and uh, an unpleasant surprise for example might involve someone jumping out from behind a tree and scaring you as you walk uh, towards your car at night yeah or somebody just booing you from behind the door from a dark room now that is also a surprise but that is not a positive surprise that's a negative surprise that that scared you yeah because of that surprise you did not feel good you felt scared and you were afraid yeah so again surprise also has three uh, variations one is uh, positive negative and the neutral one yeah and uh, also uh, you know an example of a pleasant surprise would be you know arriving home and uh, finding that your closest friend have gathered to celebrate your birthday i mean that would be a good surprise that would be a happy surprise someone booing you from behind the door or scaring you that's of course a negative surprise but uh, so, I mean, it's it's a good surprise when you see a loved one celebrating a birthday, give you a surprise at home, yeah. And uh, again, if you see uh, the facial expressions when it comes to surprise, uh, you notice uh, things like uh, raising eyebrows, widening of eyes, and opening the mouth like, wow, you know, this is what we are talking about and physical response could be you know jumping back and forth or hugging or just uh, you know uh, being happy laughing or often at times people are overwhelmed and you know tears roll down from their eyes with uh, surprise so i mean dif different ways it, it manifests in different people yeah and of course the verbal reactions if you see uh, there are a lot of these yelling screaming you know grasping and uh, a, a lot of things are there you know so uh, surprises are good bad and neutral yeah now if you see you know surprise is another uh, uh, kind of an emotion that can trigger fight or flight response as well yes so it's not just fear but surprise can also trigger that emotion uh, surprise i mean is such kind of an emotion that can trigger that fight or flight response yeah and uh, when the body is uh, you know or, or rather when when we are uh, startled people may experience a burst of adrenaline that helps people you know uh, prepare their body to either fight or flee so uh, surprise can also trigger some chemical reaction in your body like you know burst of adrenaline and um, that, that basically prepares the body to either you know uh, fight or just flight yeah so surprise has got that kind of a you know a triggering ability as well yeah surprise is not always have good and positive negative and neutral surprise triggers this flight and fight uh, response as well and also if you see surprise can have uh, you know important effect on human behavior for example uh, research has shown that people tend to you know disproportionately notice surprising events yeah so if you see uh, you know surprise has got a lot of effect on human behavior and uh, people tend to disproportionately notice surprising events so uh, the way how people notice uh, is not the same towards all the events sometimes let me give you an example uh, if someone is jumping out of the you know dark room and trying to scare me i might be surprised yeah i might have a heightened adrenaline and you know that uh, fight and flight response might get triggered but there is a situation where 
some old friends have gathered and only one friend invited me to a coffee and I go there and I see all of them. I'm happy, but I'm not surprised. Yeah. So it, it, it depends. Absolutely. It's not always that it's like this, you know, we are like, it's not always that. Yeah. It keeps changing. And uh, something might be surprising for me. Something might not be surprising for someone else. Something might be surprising for you. Something might not be surprising for me at all. Our responses are absolutely different. It varies from body to body and mind to mind and people to people. Yeah. And also, you know, this is why surprising and unusual events, you know, in the news tend to stand out in memory more than the others. Yeah. So if something is happening and something out of the box comes in, you know, that tends to stay in longer. So it depends the intensity or the impact of that, you know, surprise, whether it's extreme positive or whether it's extreme negative or whether it's extreme neutral. Neutral ones, of course, doesn't stay in memory for long, but extreme positive and extreme negative stays in there. Yeah. So it does impact and just the same way how some news really makes up the headline but some news just we just get used to it yeah so i mean like it's absolutely normal i mean after a point of time not everything would be surprising which used to surprise us in the past it might not surprise us in the present yeah it, it keeps changing i mean like we evolve and we change and uh, also, you know, uh, if you see, uh, surprise is something that uh, it's it's quite individual and it's quite, uh, I would say, exclusive. Like scare surprise, or negative surprise, or positive surprise, an extreme positive surprise. So they tend to leave a watermark on our memory, but. On the other side, if you see, after a period of time, if you are extremely surprised with something, something similar if happens, extreme positive surprise that surprised you once, a situation that surprised you once, if something similar happens in future, you might not be as surprised as how you were before yeah so again the scare prank also you might be negatively surprised and you might be scared there might be some rush of adrenaline and again uh, uh, fight or flight response might get triggered but if someone does it again the same negative uh, you know um, uh, surprise you might not react the same way how you had reacted previously so it changes with time you know or rather let me put it this way some surprises does lose its value with time it's not always the same yeah and uh, things change over a period of time yeah and also let us uh, quickly uh, get into other types of emotions now again the six basic emotions described by ekman we have talked about and uh, there are other emotions also, uh, which was included later by Ekman. And uh, those were, of course, uh, amusement, contempt, contentment, uh, embarrassment, excitement, guilt, pride in achievement, relief, satisfaction, shame. Yeah. So these were added later. And uh, apart from that, if you see uh, these six basic uh, emotions uh, does influence how we think how we react how we behave and uh, to an extent it these six emotion uh, influences in our character building as well i mean like it, it does shape our thought process it does affect influence and shape our personality and uh, the way how we think and process things so i think uh, all these six emotions need to be in moderation and uh, we should learn how to moderate these and uh, 
I mean, and then we can have a balanced approach towards life. Or else we might be over hyper, too much angry, too lovable, too much of surprises, too sad, too antisocial, too uh, depressed. So yes, moderation is essential and uh, we need to identify and we need to also often think and reflect uh, what what coping mechanism is, you know, uh, uh, what coping mechanism our body is taking up. Uh, you know to handle and to face these emotions so that also we have to keep a check and uh, the best way is to talk to someone who knows uh, you know more about mental health psychology in case if you have problem but in general also talking helps we get to understand and we get to uh, know more about us and others so yes this was all about emotions. Uh, this was quite a detailed and a long video. I hope you guys will like it. So please do like, share, subscribe the channel. And in case if you would like to add in something, you can always comment below. And please take care of yourself and be positive. And yes, uh, there is no, no fear and shame in experiencing all different kinds of emotion. But uh, yes, uh, don't let that emotion define you. Emotions are just a response. Don't let it define you or don't let it, uh, you know, make you a different person. Just be yourself, be true to yourself and uh, understand what emotions are. So yes, this was all. Please take care of yourself. Lots of love and blessings. And please, please, please subscribe this channel and share it with others. Bye.